Epigenetic Regulators and Marks As stated earlier, stem cell pluripotency is regulated and maintained by a number of cell signaling pathways leading to expression of the key transcription factors OCT4, SOX2, and NANOG. Although expression of embryonic-specific genes is regulated by these transcription factors, a second layer of control stems from epigenetic mechanisms, which are reversible modifications made to the DNA that activate or silence gene expression. Examples of these epigenetic mechanisms that lead to chromatin remodeling are post-translational modifications to histones, such as acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation, as well as methylation of CPG nucleotides. Epigenetic mechanisms resulting in gene activation are called activating marks, and those that result in gene silencing are considered repressive marks. These marks affect how tightly or loosely DNA is wound around the histone proteins and help to regulate transcription by allowing or denying access of transcription factors to the DNA. These marks are important because although each cell within the embryo contains a complete set of DNA, only a small portion of that DNA is actively being used to maintain pluripotency. Lineage-specific genes must be turned off until needed during differentiation. Activating marks create a more open conformation to the chromatin and allow transcriptional activation to occur by providing transcription factors access to the DNA. Examples of activating marks include acetylhistone H3, lysine 9, lysine 9 and 14, or lysine 23, acetylhistone H4, lysine 8 or lysine 12, and di- or trimethylhistone H3, lysine 4. In this figure is IF analysis showing expression of the activating mark trimethylhistone H3, lysine 4, in mouse embryo. Trimethylhistone H3 lysine 4 antibody has been labeled green. Actin filaments have been labeled red with DY554 phylloidin. There are high levels of trimethylhistone H3 lysine 4 expression in this mouse embryo because transcriptional activation of embryo-specific genes is occurring. Repressive marks cause chromatin to assume a more closed conformation and do not allow transcriptional activation to occur. An example of a repressive mark is di- or trimethylhistone H3, lysine 27. In the next figure, IF analysis shows expression of the repressive mark trimethylhistone H3, lysine 27, in tissue surrounding the cartilage primordium of ribs 2 and 3 in an embryonic day 14.5 mouse embryo. Trimethylhistone H3, lysine 27 antibody has been labeled green. Actin filaments have been labeled red with DY554 phylloidin. Repressive marks will be found in the mouse embryo on lineage-specific genes that are currently inactive. A special case in the use of activating and repressive marks is called a bivalent modification or bivalent domain. Bivalent modifications occur on poised state genes and are unique to certain lineage-specific genes in embryonic stem cells. The poised state gene simultaneously contains one activating mark, usually trimethylhistone H3 lysine 4, and one repressive mark, usually trimethylhistone H3 lysine 27. As differentiation occurs along a specific lineage pathway, the repressive mark for genes in that lineage is removed, and the activating mark remains. However, repressive marks for genes in other lineages remain present. Histone modifying enzymes. Histone modifications are carried out by a number of histone modifying enzymes, also referred to as epigenetic regulators. For example, histone acetylation takes place through the action of acetyltransferases, HATs, such as PCAF, GCN5, and CBP. This process is reversed by histone deacetylases, HDACs, and a family of deacetylases referred to as sirtuins. Acetylation takes place on lysine residues and usually results in transcriptional activation, whereas deacetylation results in repression. In the figure on the left, 
IFIC analysis shows expression of the deacetylase HDAC2 in cost cells. The HDAC2 antibody has been labeled green. Actin filaments have been labeled red with alexafluor 555 phylloidin. Note the presence of green signal in the nucleus. In the figure on the right, IFIC analysis shows expression of the deacetylase CERT1 in COS cells. The CERT1 antibody has been labeled green. Actin filaments have been labeled red with alexafluor 555 phylloidin. Note the presence of green signal in the nucleus. Histomethylation is a major determinant for the formation of active and inactive regions of the genome and is crucial for the proper programming of the genome during development. Methylation takes place on both lysine and arginine residues and has been implicated in both transcriptional activation and silencing. This modification is carried out by the lysine methyltransferases such as SET7 and 9, SUS12, and SUV39H1, as well as the arginine methyltransferases such as MEP50 and PRMT14 and 5. Reversal of these modifications takes place through the action of demethylases such as Jumanji D1B, Jumanji D2A and B, and Jumanji D3. In the figure on the left, IFIC analysis shows expression of the methyltransferase SUS12 in mouse embryonic stem cells growing on mouse embryonic fibroblast feeder cells. ESCs need to be grown on either feeder cells, as shown here, or grown in conditioned media media that feeder cells have been grown in, in order to successfully grow in culture. The feeder cells, or conditioned media, provides essential growth factors that ESCs need to survive. Also shown is SUS12 expression in the neural tube of an embryonic day 10.5 mouse embryo. The SUS12 antibody has been labeled green. Actin filaments have been labeled red with DY554 phylloidin. Note the presence of green nuclear signal. In the figure on the right, IFIC analysis shows nuclear expression of Jumanji D2A methyltransferase in NCCIT embryonic carcinoma cells. Jumanji D2A antibody has been labeled green. Actin filaments have been labeled red with DY554 phylloidin. Thank you for viewing this cell signaling technology in-house training tutorial. For more information or specific questions regarding this topic, please contact the CST Marketing Department at cst underscore marketing at cellsignal.com.